This is Stars and Scopes with your pal Uma Ruby. Updated every new and full moon with guidance based on planetary transits in the current sky and extra support from Tarot. For accuracy, do listen to your rising sign first if you know it, but do feel free to listen to your sun, moon and rising if you'd like the full picture. If you're loving this work and you've got some coins to spare, throw them in the tin over at buymeacoffee.com forward slash Uma Ruby and you can buy me a coffee. Okay, let's drop into it. Hello, Leo and Leo Rising. Welcome to your horoscope for the full moon in Sagittarius happening on the 14th of June at 9.52 p.m. if you're using Australian Eastern Standard Time. Now, this is lovely. This lunation is the first in about a, a, you know, a month, a little while, that we can uh, bask in the glow of Luna and worship her and allow her to heal and take back what we don't need anymore. It's after eclipse season, which we're still going to be dealing with. Don't, you're not off the hook. That's all still going to be happening for the next bit of time. But this is a nice reprieve. This is a nice moment to step through, to come through, and to appreciate the, the gifts of nature and, and really what the moon can can offer and provide us. It's lovely, it's a lovely time. I love to I love to get out there and stare at her. Now, for a full moon in Sagittarius, for a Leo, that affects your fifth house of creativity and leading from the heart and sexuality and all of those incredible uh, fiery impulses that a human being has. Funnily enough, it's what Leo does best because Leo rules the fifth house in terms of breaking up the zodiac and giving each sign a house. That's Leo's house. So interesting that, yeah, it's, it's lovely that Sagittarius is in that space for you because there's that fire that, that you know, that, that's where you're in, you're a learner in those spaces. You're a perpetual student and you are so gung-ho about that aspect of life. There's so much to learn when it comes to all of those things I've described, to, to creativity, to art, to sex, to kids, you know, the, the cosmic child, that relationship. It's exciting stuff. Um, so this will be a great time for you to either celebrate what it is that you've called in since the last time you worked with a Sagittarius moon or a time to let go of what didn't work out and what, what is no longer serving you and, and is neither desired nor required. So think about, think about that part of your life. Think about your creative output, your creative outlay. Think about your sexual appetite and your sexual body uh, if you have a sexuality. Think about uh, your relationship to your children or children around you or your inner child. Think about how you've been able to uh, foster a relationship with who it was when you were a kid. That's very important work. And let go of any lingering uh, judgments around that, that space. You'd never judge yourself when you were, you were little, I guarantee it. And if you think back and remember that little one, it's a great place to dance under the moon in their company. So that's the, that's the moon. I've got some, I've got a whole bunch of tarot cards here that I want to describe to you. So full moon's obviously a beautiful time of celebration. There's a lot of different cultures that do ritualize the full moon. Unfortunately ish, we've got another difficult aspect. So I think I've been, <clears throat> excuse me. I think I've been speaking to you about T squares for the last bit of time, which is when there's a fight for supremacy. In, in the cosmos, there's one energy that needs to have their say and interrupt what's going on between two others. So we've got the sun in Gemini at 23 degrees, the moon in Sag at 23 degrees, beautiful cosmic relationship. Neptune's smack bang in the middle of them at 25 degrees of Pisces saying, what about me? So let's break that down. Neptune in a forceful low vibration. Neptune's the planet of illusion and magic and, and majesty. I think I've spoken about Neptune quite a lot in these readings because it's been so lovely. There's been some beautiful aspects with Neptune's energy this year. This is difficult because it, a low vibrational magician is someone who's quite deluded. There's there's that real sense of, of, of being in a smoky fog or, or, you know, sort of being distracted by um, bumblebees rather than 
sticking to the task at hand. So remember that in your chart, uh, Pisces is in your eighth house of soul contracts and of uh, sexuality again, but the, a much more intense sort of version of that. It's a coming together of it's not it's not sexuality for sort of self-expression and for pleasure and for joy. It's for a committed soul contract. It's for, you know, like it's something, there's something holy about that in the way that the eighth house brings people together for, for uh, what they require of us. It's also the house of birth and death. And so I think in, if we think about humanity and we think about our emotional body, where are the depths that we plunge? Where, where's the, what, what can, what is being dredged? You know, what can be, what, how would you describe dredging something from the bottom in life? What, what's there? What's, what's that? Leo's, you know, incredible intuitive in that way, in, in their eighth house sensibility. Pisces is in their eighth. So that's where that all comes into it. And Neptune's there aiding that illusion, that magic. But where's the delusion there? What are you being deluded about? in terms of soul contractor, in terms of, you know, how you're being, how, how you're sort of betrothed or beholden to other energies. That could be really pragmatic as well, like rent and bills and inheritance and, and taxes and stuff like that. It could be something, you know, kind of 3D. But, I mean, you know, it's a full moon, so why not get mystical? So let's look at the tarot cards for those three energies because there's some interesting messages in here. So the moon is 23 degrees Sagittarius represented by the Ten of Wands. So that is a card that really discusses the exhaustion of a passion project or kind of not having enough stuff to push anything uphill. You know, it's sort of like, I, I, you know, I've been in this thing for so long. I just, I'm a tinderbox. I'm just going to strike a match and set it on fire. I don't know. I'm, I'm at the end of my tether here. Interesting stuff for the moon to be, in that position in your creative pleasure zone, your Leo zone, you know, a Leo sun will really identify and, and play out the, their, a lot of their lives in the fifth. A Leo rising, it's more to do with soul purpose. It's how, you know, your creativity is on, on a soul level. How is that being manifested? And is that exhausting you right now? Could let go of some of that um, pressure maybe the eighth house stuff, maybe this stuff about that it's your station could be let go of a little bit. The sun is in Gemini, 23 degrees, making that full moon. The card for that is the 10 of swords, which is a much more intense energy. It does talk about anxiety and depression and a mental cage. It talks about too many thought forms and how they've become our ruin. So that's dramatic and I um, hold you in this space if this is what you been, have been experiencing. I imagine that this energy is more of a light being shone onto how exhausted you are. Perhaps your brain is telling you, you know, my nervous system's shot. You know, I need a break. I need to, I need rest and respite from my position, my station, in order to be able to do it to my best, the best of my ability. That could be something. The T square energy is the Ten of Cups. So Neptune's at the Ten of Cups in Pisces. Another ending, but this is the cycle of the emotional body. Emotional fulfillment maybe is this card. It's the Judy Garland movie and the sun rising or setting and the couple and the children and the dog and the, the lute, the mandolin playing. It's complete fantasy in a lot of ways. Uh, it's delusion. So maybe Neptune's sort of trying to muscle in on any shortcomings you might be feeling about, uh, about your uh, emotional fulfillment in your creativity or your emotional fulfillment in your sex life or your emotional fulfillment in your soul contracts. All of these things could come, be coming into play for you around this, this moon, Leo. So work with it. Work with it and let go of what you don't need back to Luna. She's ready to take it. She can take this one. Uh, another thing to remember is there's a couple of real positive energies going on as well. So uh, in that difficult aspect with Neptune, the moon finds herself in a trine 
a sisterhood with Mars in Aries. So fire, fire. And Mars, remember, is the warrior. It's the passion, you know, it's the one charging ahead before everyone. So that's being, uh, you've got that support in terms of what you're letting go of in fifth house land with this moon. You've got that support to be a little bit passion led, you know, like a bit fiery around this time. Um, the sun is in positive aspect with Yes, I'll put that there. That's the wrong card though. Sorry, I've been doing this for ages and I've mixed them all up and they're all black and white and I just keep on picking up graphic card after... Oh God, I didn't think about this. I didn't think about a second camera angle. Oh God, it's difficult to self-produce. I'm sure you must know what that feels like, Leo. It's difficult just to, to do everything. You know, I'm running this ship. I'm the face of this ship. Gosh, why don't I have a publicist? Sorry, I'm just teasing. Um, so seven of swords is, is the positive aspect with the sun. So seven of swords is where Saturn is right now. So the, there's, the, there's rules and regulations and there's, there's kind of like, uh, there's a system of, uh, there's a system to honor here. There's a boundary here that is really important and in really positive aspect with some of this stuff. So maybe boundaries is a thing for you. Maybe boundaries is a thing to reinstate as you let go some of this energy to Luna in terms of creativity and sex and, and, and kids and, and all of that kind of thing. Yeah, interesting. That could be a really good one for you, actually, Leo, to work with the Saturn energy because it's in positive positive aspect with, with the sun and just really at home in Aquarius where it sits right now. So that's that. Uh, let's pull some intuitive cards. Let's see what spirit has to say in the here and now to see how we can cap off this reading. One thing to remember as well is that temperance is the card of Sagittarius and the major secrets of the tarot. And temperance is that beautiful balance of fire and water. Think about that too. That's important for you, Leo, for, for, for someone who is so public faced. If that's a way to say it. For someone who's so public with their uh, expression, it's important that your emotional needs are balanced and met too in that space of fire. All right. What can you tell me, spirit? That's too many, but I'll take this one. Ah, oh, there's two. Oh, that was a bit of a magic trick, a bit of an illusion. I've got the two of cups and the eight of cups. And the two of cups is that image of the soul contract. It's the image of two souls coming together for a time and sharing and co-creating. Could be you and your inner child. Could be a message to not walk away from that little person. Life's stressful at the moment. There's no denying that. It's Pride Month. You know, we're all donning our glad rags and trying to be cute but it's a hard it's a hard life out there it's really a lot of things to absorb with how humanity is is t turning its wheel there's salvation in fifth house stuff with the inner child of re-establishing that relationship that sacred relationship hmm what's the final card Spirit. Oh. Okay, so I got three. <laughs> Just a short reading. Okay, so we have here Cat Power, Shan Marshall, King of Swords. Uh, this is a great energy to work with if there is any of that Ten of Swords vibe going on, that anxiety that's reaching a fever pitch. Uh, reach out if that's the case also consider this uh king to be saturn in aquarius it's an aquarian card again and this energy is someone that has mental clarity that has sort of that knows the trauma that the brain can put itself through but has mastered that and can really with truth and with intellect uh offer some sage advice in terms of that imbalance, if that's what you're experiencing. Five of Swords, 
Eight of Swords in reverse. So we're moving away from this energy anyway. That's where the, the new moon was in Gem, in Gemini. Uh, so that mental cage is slipping away. That's a really good thing to remember. And the Five of Swords is walking away from an, an antagonizing energy, walking away from a battle of the minds. If there's someone or something in your space that's trying to gain supremacy, this it's a battle with no winners is the five of swords. So maybe this uh, this full moon could be a great space for you to reinstill those boundaries in what you're giving and receiving and responding to. What are you being expected to do? Eighth house, bonds, soul contracts, and what can you walk away from? What can you walk away from and how can you rediscover that intimate space? with someone, I reckon this is with yourself because we're talking fifth house and that's Leo. That's the sun card too, you know, that's the inner child, the cosmic child. This is a nice reading, Leo. I really liked it. Um, that's it from me. Uh, full moon blessings to you. Head over to my website, umaruby.com if you'd like to. I've just published a whole list of specialized readings working with the elementals and I use tarot and your birth chart to paint a picture and see what we can see. Uh, I'm really proud of it. It's going to be, um, uh, they're working so far. I really enjoy this, this, this dips form of divination. If you'd like to give me a tip, you can tip your waitress at buymeacoffee forward slash, no, buymeacoffee.com forward slash Ruby. Uh, other than that, I will see you in two weeks and we can manifest together from our heart space, from our emotional body and call in the new moon in cancer which will be great much needed at this time i reckon uh, all my love to you leo take care i'll speak to you very soon bye